Lucky. I'll give you just about anything for this. I don't even want you touching it. The Type 14 Nambu pistol. This is a typical bad guy gun seen on film. It was the standard sidearm for officers of the Imperial Japanese Army starting in 1927. It was the sidearm used in Japan's war in China in the 1930s to the end of World War II. It shows up in a number of movies, but like in reality, there are substitutes. The Type 14 was not a great sidearm. It held eight 8 by 22 mm Nambu cartridges, which have about half the energy of common 9 mm Parabellum. Though the biggest issue was reliability and initial cost, as such many Japanese officers used other sidearms privately acquired. This was most commonly the FN Model 1910. The Type 14 was sometimes called the Japanese Luger by American troops, due to a similar silhouette to the German pistol, but the designs are not functionally related, though the 14 was as collectible, with Allied soldiers often going to the extreme to acquire them, along with a Japanese sword. The desire to collect these souvenirs could go as far as to compromise safety. Souvenir hunting could be a pain for officers and soldiers alike. Any kind of Jap weapon, I'll take it. Hey, sure. Keep him in my ass. Reach up, grab what you want. <laughs> Seriously. One of the more interesting places the Type 14 shows up on film is in the Mandalorian series. Star Wars has a significant history of modifying World War II and World War I era weapons into science fiction blasters. Han Solo's DL-44 blaster is, for example, just a modified Mauser C-96. We would be honored if you would join us. This line of Nambu pistols is an old design. The first version began production in 1903, and by 1945 over 400,000 would be built. They were modified throughout production, but the typical World War II design remains easily accessible to collectors, with most going for less than $2,000. However, there are rare variants, including modified Type 14 trophies, and awards given directly to Japanese officers. A nickel-plated one, for example, is shown in the James Bond movie Never Say Never Again. Most Type 14s you'll see on film have an enlarged trigger guard for wearing gloves, but this was only common on variants after the late 1930s, which are the more common variant on the market. The first in this family of Nambu pistols was designed in 1902 by Kijiro Nambu. They were designed to replace Japan's earlier service revolver, the Type 26, an interesting but flawed double action revolver. The Nambu pistols did not have high standards to replace this revolver, but eventually it would be the dominant handgun to serve the Japanese armed forces. It typically receives less criticism than other Japanese handguns like the Type 94. First produced was the Type A, sometimes called the Grandpa among collectors, with the later Type A called the Papa. Together just under 10,000 were made. These are easily identifiable by their adjustable sights. These were less suited to mass production than the Type 14. The Type B Nambu is smaller, often called the Baby Nambu. It fires an even smaller 7x20 cartridge. These first designs could not compete with mass produced European firearms that were both cheaper and more reliable. Japanese officers were expected to buy their own service pistols, and a Type B sold for a captain's full salary for one month. The Type 14 was more successful in production. The design saw many changes from the A and B, and could be produced for about one-third the cost. The 14 got its name from the year it entered service, 1925, which was the 14th year of the Taisho era, based on the Japanese calendar. The striker fired pistol had its quirks. Field stripping was a pain. It had a twin recoil spring running either side of the bolt. The magazine was angled, causing friction between the rounds and the magazine walls. The 14 also had a weak striker spring. It was not reliable. Unloading the magazine was difficult, as was operating the safety, which could not be manipulated by the same hand gripping the gun. The highest quality Type 14s are pre-1937, at a time when Japanese production had better quality control. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this review on the Nambu 14 pistol. Ultimately not a bad beginning for a country with limited experience manufacturing pistols. There are lots of mixed opinions on this weapon, so feel free to leave yours in the comment section, and we'll see you next time.